Hello everyone, welcome to Rethinking the X-Files. This is Season 10, Episode 6. My name is Elton, and this week I am joined, as always, by Mr. Scott. How are you? Very good, how about you? Uh, yeah, not too bad. Um, so that's it. It's all over, already. I know. It went so fast. I'm not ready to go back into retirement. I have to find find a new uh, outlet for my my podcasting time. <laughs> it comes and goes so quickly, though. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I, I want to jump straight into this. All right, let's as, do it. As we normally do, anyway. Um, okay. Season. Oh, let, let me just get a synopsis of this. Uh, this is episode. Oh, Bloody hell, I'm in the wrong one already. <laughs> this is called My Struggle 2, the bookend, the other bookend of My Struggle. Uh, it says on the IMDb page, uh, Mulder and Scully uncover a shocking truth with global ramifications. That's it. Hmm. What were your thoughts on this episode? Well... As as uh, listeners to the podcast know, I I had wanted this. I thought, I I did. I was not what I wanted. <laughs> it was not. Um, <laughs> it had. Uh, I mean, I've kind of changed my perspective as we've gone through the the six episodes and and what I expected from the run as a whole. Um, I did not care for the. The acting, the dialogue, the pacing, and, and not the content. It was a, uh, it was a wholly unsatisfying uh, episode, and probably uh, my least favorite of the six. Okay. How about you? Okay. Um, <laughs> I didn't like the script. I didn't like the acting. This is the worst episode of this run of six. I thought at points it was just so out of character. Even the characters that we've come to know and love over these six episodes just seem so... I, I don't know whether this may have been recorded back-to-back -back with the first episode, but they didn't seem in character yet. And so... I didn't like it one little bit. The... Yeah, I, I agree. I, I can't really think of a part of it that I I liked. Like that, I, oh, well, this little snippet was good, or that little scene was good. It, it, was, uh, it was very unsatisfying. And even, I thought at some times, well, maybe it's because of my perspective coming in. I don't know some of the characters as well, but... Uh, I really tried during the first five episodes, and it probably came across in the podcast too that I, I've been looking for um, what made everybody like the characters. Definitely. I've been looking for patterns in behavior and all of that. And like you said, I, it just was just ooh, I didn't like that. Oh no, it's just just rude and <laughs> oh, rude's not the right word, but just it wasn't. Uh, it, none of that likable quality was there. Yeah, I could. I can tell that you've been trying to enjoy it on your your journey. Yeah. Well, I have. There's parts of it. I, I think where you had mentioned that this was kind of a um, little bit of everything and maybe they were trying to draw in some new new viewers, and maybe they were, it, it kind of uh, – it never felt to me like they were trying to hook me in other than that first first episode – I mean, I really was engaged in that first episode. I thought the setup was good. I thought um, I, we had a parallel thing in this episode where we had Mulder kind of doing the narration and the, the photos being scrolled by, and we're sitting there talking about who's taking the photos and, mm -hmm. you know, all of that. We had basically the same thing in, in the first five minutes of this episode, and I didn't feel any of that uh, value or connection or... or uh, interest in it really it was the the lone part that i thought was Im important for the plot and maybe again because i i'm not familiar with the whole first nine seasons was it was really the most detailed reference to scully's abduction okay 
you know, so we had a little bit of, of exposition. Um, but I don't know that we really needed it. I mean, I've, I've gotten the point already that at some point years ago, she was abducted. Um, in fact, what I pictured in my head was probably more interesting or more fitting to the plot um, than what I actually gathered from the, the photos and the, the screenshots and stuff they showed. Yeah, I, it felt as if it was going in a different direction to everything that we've been taught in the previous seasons. Mm -hmm. Granted, I don't know everything that's been taught in the previous seasons, but it was. It felt as if the the previous episodes that, that had come were talking about his sister and his sister's abduction, and then Scully's abduction. Mulder, I think, was abducted at one point as well. And it was all kind of interlinked and what is going on, what's with all these abductions. And this was just bobbins. It was just terrible. All of a sudden, we got a virus that's knocking around that comes out of nowhere. And I, it was just an utter, utter mess. We had... Tad Sweaty, Sweaty Tad on on the internet, and he bugged the living bejesus out of me throughout that whole episode. Um, there's there's so many things that were wrong with it. Um, well, let, let's look at the plot a little bit. And you kind of mentioned that. So it, it starts with uh, after the the monologue, um, which I quite liked actually. I I didn't mind the monologue. I don't okay. mind them at all. No, I, I didn't mind it, but it was kind of, um, it didn't add anything, I guess. And, and at the beginning, I kind of thought it would. But so we go, and, and Scully is late because the garage is on lockdown for some mysterious reason. So I'm thinking something happened, you know, it's, and she goes into the office, and Mulder's not there. Again, I'm thinking, some, you know, something's happening. Something's, there's an event at the, uh the headquarters yeah but that didn't really go anywhere and she plops down on the desk and and puts on the video and we get our first mention of timing it's been six weeks since episode one yeah bang we know exactly where we are and everything Which, that has happened in between as well that that seems short to me mm -hmm. i mean it feels to me more like six months did okay. you feel six weeks was kind of a realistic uh, for what's happened and the the progression of the characters and? Oh, I I think six weeks is a little short. Just where they they feel comfortable with each other and where they feel comfortable in the FBI and pretty much changing all their um, getting all their IDs, giving their badges, and it just felt very hurried as if it was already on standby there you go here's your old id it i'm sure there's got to be more checks than that you don't just join the fbi and <laughs> three what four days later you're out on the beat and you're given a gun and a badge and then you can wade into anything i don't i wouldn't think it would work like that well it would also mean that the previous five episodes basically happened in real time so one week was spent on the Wear Monster. One week was spent in Texas. One week was spent in Philadelphia. Um, and there was really no, and the, there's no time in between. And yet it felt like things were happening in between. Yeah. So that struck me as short. And then for it to have been so short, I'm thinking that he's, he's so out of sight, out of mind. We didn't even know if he was going to reappear. Uh, I know you, you you suspected it, but there's been no mention of him. Who's that? You know, Tad. Uh, Tad, right. Yeah. So he disappears suddenly. This woman's vaporized. Um, I, you know, originally I was expecting some sort of follow up to those events, but this the set of characters that brought Mulder and Scully together again and brought them back into this, it's just they have not been mentioned at all until now. The incident with Sveta, mm -hmm. surely that should have been brought up by one of them. It should have been in a newspaper report. It should have been on 
in on a TV in the background. When when they saw the were monster, it should have been on the TV in the background somewhere there. Um, it should have been related to a, a car uh, found by this uh, burnt out car was destroyed. Um, occupants missing, assumed vaporized. We don't know what happened there, unless like the alien technology comes along, blows stuff up, and then they have like a a sweeper. Um, collection team behind them, just sweeping stuff up, putting stuff in trash cans and then mm-hmm. disappearing, laying new tarmac and that's it. It's all gone, all covered up. I, I just felt that was important and it was never addressed. They didn't speak about it at all and it just felt lost. And so he's been, he's re-emerged um, and clearly... Mulder knows that, and Scully doesn't. Yeah. Uh, she's watching the video. She starts to zone out a little bit, and the phone rings, and it's Tad O'Malley calling from Mulder's house. Apparently, they've been had arrangements to meet up. So so this is even... It's not just now that he's reemerged. This has been a... Uh, he's been in play for a while. Yeah, he's... It feels like he's been there a couple of times. I, I don't know. Why is Tad trying to speak to Mulder on Mo, Mulder's phone at work when he's in Mulder's house? Yeah, I thought about that. And on the second watching, I felt like he had gone to meet Mulder. Mulder wasn't there. He called the office to say, hey, I'm at your house. I let myself in. Your house is a mess. You're not here. What's going on? Okay. And he got Scully. But yeah, my first thought was the same as you. Like, what's it's all suspicious. Yeah. And so, so then we have Scully goes to Mulder's house, meets O'Malley, and there's no grabbing him by the scruff of the neck. Where have you been? What happened? Why didn't you <laughs> talk? And, you know, what what's going on? It was it was a very like you said the script, the dialogue was very stoic and. And um, oh, I was stagnant false. beyond belief. The and oh, go ahead. The the amount of times it was uh, agent this, agent that, agent oh, Einstein. Einstein. Was the worst. A- her her dialogue was the the worst of it all. Do agents actually call each other agent Mulder, agent Scully, agent this, agent that? Or in doubt. every sentence, you know, I I feel Mulder and Scully have built up this report. Uh, rapport where they call each other Scully, Mulder, Scully, Mulder. It's fine. It works. Yeah. It, it's yeah. it's a friendly term. I know that Einstein is not on friendly terms with these people, but okay, you don't have to introduce her to your mother as agent whatever, and this person as agent this, and stop it with the agent thing. Just felt false. Yes, yes. And, it, you know, it also struck me as that kind of insincere when you're like, yes, sir, of course, madam, like where it's a condescending, I'm using a term of respect disrespectfully. Yep. Because they just kept throwing it back and forth. But um, O'Malley makes, they're talking about um, uh, the the claim O'Malley made that everyone has alien DNA and and he makes an assertion that he has alien DNA. Mm-hmm. So then... He said that that's been tested as well. Yes. And yet he becomes sick toward the end. Yeah. So I was confused on a little bit with that progression. So Scully believes everyone has alien DNA. And that's what's allowed uh, the viruses to be... When you get a vaccine... It actually infects you. That is what is thought at the beginning of the episode, yes. But by the end, it's kind of revealed that the alien DNA is the true vaccine. That's why she's healthy and no one else is, because she has the strand and others don't, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, she has the alien DNA, and my God. And Einstein they... doesn't. Yeah, I wish they would stop saying alien DNA every other time. Every every time they said Agent Einstein, they said a, uh, alien DNA every single time, just to remind you that they have alien DNA. Um, yeah, so it 
it progresses to say that Scully has the alien DNA, which is helping her immune system fight this smallpox thing. This It's not called a Trojan. What was it called? Spartan virus. Yes. All of a sudden, this bugged me. It really bugged me. All of a sudden, she knows everything about what's going on. She's assuming stuff. She's a scientist, and she never assumes. And yet, every moment that she's on screen, she's assuming. Well, right from the first soldier who's got the uh, lesions on his arm. Oh, it's an epidemic. <laughs> from one, you see one person showing anthrax symptoms, and and at that point, Einstein's right to say like that's a huge leap. You know, maybe could be a, a dozen different reasons why he's having. No, no, it's this. And, and that actually left me thinking that that could have been the result of editing. Perhaps there was a longer exchange between O'Malley and and Scully where she got more information. And so she's going to the hospital with, with uh, a reason for what she's saying that we didn't get to see. But that's, that's definitely giving the writers the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, but when you have a, a longer conversation that's off screen, it's alluded to. Or you somehow know that that has happened and they, and you can work it out that they've had that conversation. These felt very false conversations. They were right. very, very one sentence conversation and that's all the sentence that we were going to be saying. There's no more, no less. What you right. see is what you get. And it, it didn't feel like they cleaned up Mulder's house and had a little conversation, had a cup of tea. No, she called the police, and I expected it to, like, he was going to run out the back door. Yeah. Because he's afraid of the government. Yeah, that's true. But so, yes, so we go to the hospital, and, um, yeah, that that's really where uh, I began to... I don't know, if, maybe it wasn't the hospital. Did they go to, back to the office first and see Skinner? And pick up Einstein? Yeah, she had you back to the office. Bumped into Einstein. As soon as you walk through the door, oh, okay, there's another brick wall standing there talking to me. Yeah. Okay. I was willing to give her the benefit of the doubt in the last episode. Mm -hmm. I, I was quite happy to see them too. And I, was, I would have watched an episode with them solving stuff. Now, as far as I'm concerned... Did Scully really have to give her the drip? Maybe she didn't have to give her the drip and, you know, just let her just die. Let's see what happens when one of these people die and doesn't have alien DNA. Let's experiment on Agent Einstein. Let's find out. Well, we got a little bit of what we talked about last week. We ended up this time with Scully and Einstein paired and Miller and Mulder paired. And we didn't get so much out of the Miller-Mulder pairing but it was a very clear distinction of where they're at between Einstein and Scully. Now here you have Einstein still being that, I'll call her young Scully scientist, almost obnoxiously so, but maybe, maybe that's what she was in episode in seasons one and two, you know, such the cynic and such the, you know, where are you getting that idea from? Yeah. But now you had Scully season 10 Scully, sitting there saying you just have to trust me it's just the way it is it's the government they're doing these things it's it, i would imagine that's how season one and season two Mulder sounds but she's the scientist though that's the thing she's the one that we turn to for a bit of common sense and yet when they these two were on screen talking to each other scully is just presuming stuff and making pulling stuff out of her bum hole really yeah. And we're, it's forcing me to side with Einstein, which I, I feel uncomfortable with. That's, I don't want to be there. Right. Well, what's missing and what I had expected there to be were the seeds of things through the first uh, five episodes that she could be sitting there now connecting the dots. So I thought, you know, we had episode, the pilot episode. We had the O'Malley revelation and, and Sveta and, and such. Then we had the the uh, babies, the birthing of the alien babies mm -hmm. again. Um, 
And that's where I thought, so we'll just, just a little seed, 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 steps three, four, five, and then here she'd be having had these experiences where Einstein didn't, she could be sitting there making these claims from a science perspective. Not just this emotional, you don't know what I've been through. Yeah, just trust um, me type yeah. thing. But th- we would have all seen where, why she's convinced. Uh, but then we took the detour of, of the other three episodes, and they had no mythology component. And it was. It was a big jump then to come back. She didn't reference at any point any point she didn't mention anything about uh the baby factory no, um, i thought for a minute that's where they went when they went to the hospital no that's scully's hospital that she works at okay i can't remember the name of the hospital but oh, yeah if, if... some weird weird hospital name that you wouldn't actually want to end up being in right it's like hell well, hospital why why have you brought me here no i don't want to be here yeah, it looked well. It looked like the nun place, you know, the the sister place. And they walked in, and the the soldier says basically the same same kind of interaction they had with um, that one mother. So I really thought for a minute that's where they were. You know, she's walking in, and like, can you help me, please? Like, oh, here we are again. It's, you know, now we're going to get that um, experimenting on people in the hospital, and it went the different route. It went that something had triggered the plague. Yeah, well, the uh, the doctor that she sends the um, army guy off with, yes, that was the doctor that did her tests in the first episode. Okay, that's familiar. Yeah. So yeah, we we have grounds to believe that that is her hospital that she works at. So there, that explains too why she has free run of the place and she's being given a lot of, of privacy. And I guess she didn't quit that job to go join the FBI. That's just something she does in her spare time. Yeah, she moonlights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just make vaccines, you know, every now and again. Have a little tingle. So O'Malley says that the the disease has been triggered by chemtrails. Oh. And it implies that his actions six weeks ago have escalated the pacing and all but i i didn't get that sense um did you think that this that something had caused them to act now and we certainly didn't have anything in the last other than episode two we didn't have anything in three four or five that would make make you feel like uh uh-oh they're getting too close we have to yeah this was a stumbling block because all of a sudden it's just related to chemtrails People are dropping stuff out. We've been exposed to some sort of virus through the smallpox vaccine, which is now triggered by stuff in chemtrails. Yes. Um, and it's only now that they it turns on, as if someone's turned it on, put something in the fuel, in aviation fuel, and then dropped it over the whole world. Because they said that this was going to be a, a pandemic, mm-hmm. and so uh, there was something about graffiti, and this is where the alien, alien DNA. If is you be saw t- the tag, then you were that. That didn't yeah. make sense. Didn't make sense at all. Why? I I just don't understand. Okay, the graffiti. Some people would start graffitiing up stuff, you know, to mark territory, but. That's got nothing... There's no correlation between the chemtrails and then the graffiti. This is across United States. Mm-hmm. It's also starting in the military uh, first. And then it's working through the population. Um, I just felt the chemtrail story was a dead end. And I, why now? Why that day did it all suddenly kick off? Right, he didn't mention the smallpox vaccine. That was a Scully conclusion. Yep. Um, yeah, he he sounded much more rambling and frantic and throwing all the conspiracy things out at once. You know, it, it's all connected, and and there was uh, there was no reason to think he'd be taken seriously either. This Tad guy. Mm-hmm. 
in the first episode, I thought he was going to be, he was going to work out to be their informant. I thought he was going to have all the information, but coming from a source which he couldn't disclose, but he'd have good information, and he'd be able to feed them. Maybe it was coming from the cigarette smoking man. Yeah. But you'd still be fed information by this guy. I was happy to go along with that. This guy just seems like PewDiePie on YouTube, just getting Mm -hmm. as many numbers as he can to get as many clicks as he can, and then all the advert revenue before it. He seems more of a fraud now in this, but he's making himself out to be a big guy with his big studio and stuff like that. There are not many people on YouTube and doing this media sort of thing with masses of um, studio equipment and studio settings and teams behind them to to produce this sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It, It just seems far overblown for what he actually is. I'd be... I know he's driving around in a limousine and he's got rich off of this, but if he's got rich off of this, then surely he'd have... He wouldn't just be sat on the internet on YouTube type thing. Right, and he'd be noticed that he was missing. And who who took him? Who are we supposed to believe uh, took him away in episode one? Well, yeah, if if you're that high profile, then if when you disappear... You're going to be noticed that you're dis- you have disappeared, and so you can't have it both ways. You can't be the the entrepreneur on YouTube, but a millionaire. But then I, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't work. Yeah, I think what was missing in hindsight is you could take the episodes three, four, and five, and just have added in. Two minutes at the beginning, two minutes at the end of of the government getting in the way somewhere. Like kind of how we thought with the uh, terrorist attack when, when there were the guys in the hospital. And we thought, well, are they just racist or are they the government trying to get Scully and, and Miller out of the room? Yeah. Like just a little, little bit of that in each of the episodes. Um a little bit of an obstacle, a little bit of uh, why is why is this not going as smoothly as it should, or why is this why, why does this name keep popping up? Um, something like that could have could have gone a long way toward tying this all together. But th- this was such a leap; it almost feels like you had a, a twenty episode season, and they picked six to air right now, and they picked the first the third the seventh the 13th and the, and the season finale and it's just too much too much of a leap yeah yeah it's not enough connected tissue is there no no so well so we did uh, uh you know what happened in the hospital was was what it was but then we did get to see what happened to Mulder yeah he turned into Jason Bourne yeah for a second pretty brutal well, how did that go from I'm here to I understand he was trying to take him to speak to the cigarette smoking man but he was the guy was going to assassinate him he wasn't just going to knock him out he had the gun he was going to shoot him why do we need to assassinate him when we know that he'll die anyway he, yeah he'll die anyway that, that's <laughs> that's true there, there's an airplane flying over your head now it's dropping chemicals on you Allegedly, um, yes. we don't need to assassinate him. It just doesn't make sense. So, uh, I, so he he gets a message to go find the cigarette smoking man, and he he jumps in his car. Looks pretty groggy. I kind of like he didn't say much up until that point, but the way that he's just rolling his eyes, driving, he looks beaten up. He he's taking a kick in. But what's what's with well all right so you don't answer Skinner's call but uh, this relationship that Scully and Mulder are supposed to have especially coming off of the last episode where they're walking in the field holding hands and uh, 
that how how does he not contact Scully? Yeah. And say, be careful, or guess who guess who just attacked me, or you know. Yeah, don't go to my house just in case it happens again. Uh, yeah. I've just tried. I've just had someone come round with a gun trying to blow my brains out. But do you know what? I won't tell you just in case. So I did notice that phone tracker. You know, I'm always interested when they show like a computer screen or something. I assume that the the writers leave stuff on purpose. Yeah. You know, what, whatever the other icons are. Sometimes it's a little inside joke, and and so whatever was there was on there. But I saw the phone tracker thing on the first time when Scully's looking at the screen and then we see Miller use that to find Mulder. Do you think that was on it's an unusual thing to have and to have set up that way. Do you think that was left for Scully? Like he assumed she would be smart enough to go and possibly and do that on her own? Possibly yeah. Uh, the thing that bugs me about that is Mulder is the first episode, we commented on how paranoid he is. And how technologically inept as well. Yes. He he was having trouble taking photos with his mobile phone in the third episode. Um, he had trouble in somewhere else as well with a, a phone, I tend to believe. Um, yeah, he's he's paranoid. He hitchhiked instead of using uber and yeah he had um masking tape over his camera that we mentioned in the first episode on on his laptop and yet he's left his laptop on his desk with a an app that can find his phone actively set up to track it as well it would have been better had we if someone stumbled to find out that skinner has been tracking Mulder all along with a government issued phone or something that would have worked better yeah that would have made more sense or even if O'Malley had you know said oh well, I know where to find him type something I should use my keyboard sound we were talking about <laughs> you know it's just there and uh, he calls it up and goes see you can find anybody these days on the internet and yeah until they track him down yeah the work issued phone yes you know find my iPhone that works I I yeah. know that, that that can be used to find your iPhone. Um, the only thing I can think of is he's left in a hurry or he's left his laptop at work. But he's left it there because he feels it's safe there because he's down in the dungeons. Uh, he's also in an FBI building. Mm-hmm. You're pretty certain you're not going to have the, the bloke who steals the laptops from Starbucks walking down there and poaching his computer. Um, the phone app thing, the only th- reason, well, the only thing I can think of is that because he's so clumsy with technology, he's also clumsy about losing his phone. Yeah. That's the only thing I can give it. Uh, anything else, then no, don't be silly. He wouldn't have that sort of thing on there. Well, that's the kind of thing I, I, I and maybe it's a lot to ask in a long season but when you're doing a six episode run that's the kind of thing that would have been would have gone a long way to have him lose his phone once have scully mention you know there's ways to track these phones so you never lose it the a passing throwaway comment in episode three yep pays off huge here that would have been amazing that would have worked so well and it, it just little things like that are are what's missing and um I mean, it has that feel to me of a show that has been canceled, and they're just trying to throw together a quick wrap-up for the fans. And I say that knowing that there's no wrap-up element at all to the episode. <laughs> oh, don't know. Oh. No. But uh, so, so he goes to um, see the cigarette smoking man. We had another agent come in, which apparently is a. A character from earlier. Oh, what seasons. was her name? Hang on, let me find her name. She was Monica Reyes. Yes, Agent Reyes. Yeah, and even that again, the dialogue. It just it, it, hello, so Agent artificial. Reyes. Hello, Agent Scully. How are you, Agent Reyes? I'm fine, Agent Scully. Yes. Oh, isn't it raining, Agent Scully? Yes, it is, Agent. I Reyes. have something to tell you. You're going to want to know. 
Well, what do you want to tell me? Well, you're going to want to know it. Oh, okay. I do want to know it. I am going I to tell you now. Been, what I've been doing here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. N nothing about... Right, okay, I don't want to sit on this park bench because it clearly been rained for the last half hour, but okay, yeah. let's sit down on here. Yeah. Oh, come on, they don't carry tea towels with them to wipe off the, the excess water. They really don't. Oh, it's just sim simple little things like that that bug me. And oh. all she served was to pass along information. It's not like when Mulder gets to uh, the cigarette smoking man, she's standing by his side like a henchman or personal bodyguard. It, although she described herself basically as having sold her soul to be his personal valet to, to survive the plague, but... Um, yeah. Can we talk it, about the cigarette smoking man for a second? Sure, sure. That When she first walked into that room and she'd been told that he'd been burnt, uh, mm -hmm. he, he's probably fallen asleep with a cigarette in his hand, hasn't he? I think that's <laughs> what we're led to believe. Well, they said even a missile couldn't kill him, so that must be something that happened in one of, I assumed it was something that happened in one of the movies or episodes. I'm just guessing that he's hooked up on alien DNA. It's coming out of his eyeballs at yeah. certain points. Um, and so he can heal himself. He's some sort of salamander that can mm -hmm. heal himself. He'll be absolutely perfectly fine. Um, when I first saw him in that bed, that was quite creepy. I kind of liked that. Mm -hmm. All his um, contorted skin, and he, he looked like he smelled a bit pussy. Yeah, yeah. It, it, that's the vibe I got, off and I thought that was quite cool. I didn't want to watch that scene again because it was so vile, but it was done really well. Uh, and I liked the when we saw him again. He was he looked a lot better, looked a lot healthier, and yet his face was half. It wasn't quite there wasn't quite perfect well you could tell there was something artificial or like uh skin grafted oh, do you reckon that's alien skin well he takes it off like uh it was almost like a piece of uh plasticine covering well yeah you had that on his right hand side of it as you're looking at him sorry his left hand side of the face as you look at him yeah. his right hand side on his left hand side that looks less healed, possibly, I hate to say it, alien DNA type skin, Yeah. possibly. Mm -hmm. He's obviously immune, like Scully, so he's been jacked up on that sort of stuff. Yeah. Oh. But, yeah, I don't know... Um... I don't know who his group is. Like, he's by himself when... When Mulder gets to him, he's by himself when Agent Reyes is attending to him. Yeah, um... Yeah, like he I seems... expected to see a group, you know, that it wouldn't be in his cabin, it would be in an office with, uh, you know, around a big round table with the Prime Minister, you know, like every other <laughs> conspiracy kind of movie. There's the Secretary of State, there's the Vice President, who's been undermining the president all along and the prime minister or, you know it's it's all these lackey types who this is their chance to show the way the government should really be run i don't know he seems more of a he's a cloak and dagger guy isn't he so he's just sat there in the wings trying to keep himself to himself so he doesn't draw attention to himself and so he's quite happy just to sit in his house and watch this pan out let everyone die. Do you think he's in charge, or is he just aware of it and prepared? I think he's in the chain. I don't think he's in charge. I don't think he's authorizing it, and I don't think he's backing it. I think he's just... Just aware. He, he's loop. maneuvering himself so he is safe, he's aware of it, and he's involved, but he's not the main man. I personally think that. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Well, so he, he, uh, I expected him to inject Mulder. So Mulder's passing out, dying on the floor, and he says, Come on, you, do you want to live? You want to be there with Scully? You know, I want you here. 
you make my life worthwhile. And I don't know what he's, the cigarette man's just going to let Mulder die. I expected him to, you know, oh, you're fainting. Shh, little, uh, injection gun. Well, you're too weak to resist. And now you've got the DNA and you're, you're uh, on the side of, of the devil here now. Yeah, so what is the long-term plan on this? They want to wipe out um, the humans because because of what? I I don't I don't see the reason for it. Is well, it because he says deforestation it was or what? It was humans were going to self-exterminate eventually. So he's just expediting the timetable. And the implication is they've handpicked some people to uh, survive and, I guess, repopulate the Earth. But, I, I mean, usually when you, you do, like in these disaster movies or, not Armageddon, what was it, Deep Impact, where the meteor was going to hit and they picked, you know, almost like a Noah's Ark kind of thing. Well, yeah. we got top ten scientists and we'll need a botanist and we'll need, uh, you know, some psychologists and you know farmers and uh, like this just felt like uh, short-sighted. It's him and twelve generals, and they're going to take Scully and uh, I assume William. Oh, the... <laughs> I like the cigarette mo- smoking man. I like it when he's on screen. I feel mm-hmm. there's some danger, but these scenes when he's talking to Mulder, it reminds me of Doctor Evil. I was just gonna say, or, or like Claw in the old Inspector Gadget. One cartoons. million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, it just felt so false and just you no. Know, when um, Miller's putting Mulder into the car, and then he says, "Oh yeah, just tell him um, something before he dies." I, I can't even remember. It's just a, a load of guff that was coming out of his mouth. But it just seemed so cliche and. Well, even Miller's like, well, and we're going to leave, and you can't stop us, and okay, <laughs> you're going to go die. Go ahead. Go go drive and die. You know? <laughs> Miller. <laughs> Miller did put handcuffs on the guy, didn't pull a, you know, he's just kind of like, come on, we're getting out of here. Miller's like taking his drunk dad home after yeah. <laughs> after a bender, isn't he? <laughs> In yeah, his dad's car. Yeah, more for Mulder than policemen. Yeah, like... <laughs> Should they be arresting him or something? Uh, exactly. That's what I mean, you know. I know they got bigger fish to fry and all that, but surely he should be arresting him. Maybe handcuff him to a radiator. Well, so... bigger fish to fry, but this is a man who apparently knows what's going on and <laughs> feels empowered enough to pick who lives and dies. He's probably a key player in it. Yeah. Probably should bring him down to HQ. So... I feel this story is very, very weak anyway. There's not a lot to it. Um, Scully makes some antidote, or she finds out that it's not that everyone's got alien DNA, it's that everyone hasn't got DNA. People with the alien DNA are immune to this sort of thing going on, and so she makes a batch of her... She shares her specialness. Yeah, let's call it her specialness, yes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> her, her specialness in a bag, and she starts knocking that around, running around the streets, telling naughty boys off for looting as well. Yes, yes. What the hell? You you see people looting, you don't run up to them and say, no, stop it. I swear she clipped one of them around the ear hole as well at, at one point, and she's running around with the, um, the saline solution. Oh, and she's not dishing this out? How is she creating this? Right. And in what volume and at what speed. And then she's, like you said, running around on foot or driving her giant SUV through uh, log jams of traffic, which seem to part magically. No one else can get through, but as she drives up, <laughs> they all just peel to the left and right. You create a lane for her. Uh, like my thought was, again, the story whole, why is Skinner not involved? Maybe you don't have the whole agency, but... In another another show, she'd be commandeering a helicopter, and they'd be getting as quickly as she can to wherever Miller and and Mulder were. Yeah. 
Yeah. But so um, Skinner could be dead in his house. He could yeah. have been eating his um, chicken supreme from that night with his uh, missus and his kids, and all of a sudden he's died. But, you know, there's Scully with her magical potion, her specialness, walking yeah. around just helping the people that she deems like a worthy. Giant water balloon that doesn't break somehow with everything she's doing. Yeah. And somehow magically she finds you know, finds them on the bridge. Oh god. In the middle of a traffic jam, in the middle of a major city. She they meet in the center of a bridge. That driving down the, the bridge where she's weaving in and out of cars, mm-hmm. there's when I'm in traffic I I don't leave big gaps like that. No, and you certainly don't move over. There was no flashing lights, no siren. There was no reason to think she was anything other than just a obnoxious person. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I don't leave big gaps because I don't like people cutting me up like she did and just jump the whole <laughs> queue. And then she can run down the middle of the, the road as well to get to them. Yes. Oh, oh it just so happens oh, I, I got the right bridge. That's good because there were two bridges there. Yes. That would have been funny if she got the wrong bridge and gone, ah, um, I'm all the way over here. Can you see me waving? Yes, I yep. can. I'm dying here. That's all right. I've got alien DNA. It's fine. It's fine. I've got a bag full of it as well. <laughs> yeah, so but she gets to them and then, oh, uh, he's too far gone. He needs stem cells. What? How can oh. you diagnose that there and then? Yes. And as if that's something that's Okay go find my son who yeah. we have no idea where he is or if he's even alive and you're yeah. in the middle of traffic jam go find him he needs stem cells okay where can i buy them yeah. um you don't buy them you take them out are they out the um spine or spinal fluid yeah, or something spinal fluid. Uh, and it's got to be of someone with the alien dna apparently oh jeez. which i mean not to be morbid but you had the alien DNA baby factory going on from episode two. So, like, if you... And I'm not saying you take baby stem cells, but you had you had more than just her as a source of this alien DNA. In theory, aren't all those mothers and all those children... Yeah. That whole... They are all viable survival candidates. And they let, um, let one of the patients kill the doctor. Mm-hmm. One of your pe- people that could have created all this stem cell DNA malarkey for the rest of the planet. This is a big deal. The whole of you, I'm assuming the whole of the United States is crippled by this. And you've got one ginger haired lady running around in high heels <laughs> with her specialness. Oh, but, but there was clearly the lights flickered. Didn't you see that? So clearly there was, there was an effect and uh, there was looting of, uh, a couple of rowdy young men. You know, it was, there was a traffic jam on the bridge. She had to drive on the median. Oh, jeez. But it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was very contrived. And then with all of that, uh, and I'll admit, I, I lost track of the time. You know, it, while I found the story non-engaging and like I wasn't on the edge of my seat waiting to see what happened next. I also wasn't watching the clock going, when is this over? And then all of a sudden it was over. We were on the bridge and we only have about 30 seconds left of the, of the episode. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was not uh, a resolution at all. No. Would you class it as a cliffhanger? What happened? I know we'll we'll talk about it in detail in a sec, but would you class it as a cliffhanger or or what? No. But just because I don't have a specific lingering question, um, I, I, I would think a good cliffhanger has resolution for most of the story, but there's one will he, won't he... Did they don't didn't they aspect mm-hmm. that you're dying to know, and this just felt like look oh, we ran out of tape. You know uh, we lost the last ten minutes of the episode. We'll we'll reshoot it and show it to you. I, I'm worried that the next season will start six months down the road. It won't pick up where it left off. It'll be six months farther down the road. 
and you won't know what happened. Um, specifically on the bridge. I think I, I want to talk about the. There's three th- uh, scenes I want to talk about in a sec, right. uh, but with that, I think that leaves it open to if Gillian Anderson doesn't want to come back next season, mm-hmm. then oh, she's disappeared. They I've they abducted people, her. Or I've heard people talk about the ray of light versus the Sveta ray of light. It's it was missing the green targeting element. Yeah, that felt like it was a laser to to kill her, and this was just a laser to point her out. Yeah, or a light to up, point her something down or Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't... I agree. It definitely gives her an out for having been transformed, taken away, vaporized or something, but I, I got the sense that um, the expectation is she'll be... She would be there in whatever happens next. Yeah. Okay, I want to quickly talk about three of these scenes very very quickly if you don't mind sure. um first off when that triangular space ship thing turned up and shone its light on them i quite liked that turning up i liked that um the cars around them all their headlights blinked off mm-hmm. and there was a, a certain circle there, there was an area around them that it's like an, a small EMP had gone off and everything electrical had just died. I quite like that. That was very effective, very subtle. Didn't If you didn't see it in that second, you missed it type thing. I, I quite like that. Yeah. Um, God, I hope someone got it on their camera. Obviously, Mulder didn't. Good one, <laughs> he's useless with technology. And but you have to think, it's not a secret. This is a very public thing. On the bridge in Washington, D.C. or wherever it was. It... There's hundreds of people there. Yes. And on the other bridge as well. There's hundreds of people. It's not like it swooped in and grabbed her or vaporized her. It, it hovered and shone the light and people yeah. dilated. And... Yeah, that was the other scene on that I liked. The, the eye shot where it, it just dropped down into her eye. And I thought that was very clever. Very well done. Um... The bit that I, the other scene I I did enjoy, the very beginning of the episode where we had the monologue of uh, Scully, and it was the bit that I thought I got spoiled on, where Scully turns into an alien. Yes. That I I was spoiled with a gif on that on the internet, mm-hmm. and I I kind of lost it. I was like, oh, you ruined it for me. Um, turns out they didn't, but I kind of wish they did. I wish that was our cliffhanger, because if we'd just found out that Scully was an alien all this time, flipping out, that would have been brilliant. Right, or even if you had been left to wonder, yeah. since when? Post-abduction? Post, like, like at what point? That would have been amazing, that would have been magical, that would have, mm-hmm. oh my god, that would have... That would have saved that episode for me. But stick it on there as if it's a, oh, I've got alien DNA, but I didn't want to say I've got alien DNA because you've got a hundred times me saying that coming up. So we just show a, a, a quick wipe into an alien, which I thought was done very, very well. Yes, but it was done without, con- like, it wasn't a dream. It wasn't a, it didn't, did it happen? Did she morph temporarily? Like, I mean, it, I don't think she, it did, but... I don't it, think it meant anything at all. No. So it, it took a great scene and a powerful potential aspect of the story, and it was a throwaway shot. Yeah. So, um, is there anything else that we haven't covered in this? I don't... I, I can't think of anything. It's very weak. Very weak. I, I yeah, feel... I, I feel kind of bad <laughs> for, for getting for for phoning you up and saying, "Yeah, do you, do you want to do this?" And you're like, "No, no, uh, it, do you know it, what? it could it could have been a lot. It could have been something really special. And there's so many spots, like we said, along the way they could have laid the groundwork. If not, no, we were talking about 
I said a couple minutes here of of the government getting in the way or like little teases like we had in the terrorist episode or even people seem like Scully seeming very lucky you know whoa who, that sniper shot like uh, was deflected or you know the were monster um something tripped it and it some seemed like someone was always looking out for Scully that would have gone a long way mm-hmm. you know you could look back now and say huh they're protecting their prize but it it um it's what I thought I wanted and maybe had it all gone that route I would have been more satisfied with it but yeah. I it was it was not um I, I I actually in hindsight would have preferred just another uh had, had all six episodes just been kind of the rollicking adventures of Scully and Mulder and going nowhere <laughs> no, with no connection, you know? Yeah, the this kind of proves that the mythology is, is getting weak and the certain aspects of Monster of the Week are the strongest element of X-Files, um, which worries me because I kind of like the mythology... I kind of like the idea of aliens and alien tampering and abductions and stuff like that. That's what interests me. I can I can do the Monster of the Week uh, every now and again, but I'm interested in the alien thing. But this was just so far removed on what any, anything I want. It, it didn't work for me, and I'm... I'm gutted. I really am. I've been when whenever we've bashed down on X Files on these last six episodes, I've wanted to champion it. I've really tried to. It it's all right. Don't worry about it. It it'll be fine. And I I don't know. It, I feel a bit gutted. Feel a bit let down in this episode. Yeah, I I think. Ratio wise, two and a half out of six. If you wanted to do a little less than half the episodes on mythology, that could have worked very well with a 13 episode run, 20 episode run. I think it it had zero chance of being successful, though, when you're only working with six. Yeah. It, two and a half. It was just too much to try to accomplish in, in that short span. But if we were talking... Uh, you know, six out of thirteen. I think that could have worked, and and it would have been nice to mix it up: monster of the week, mythology, things like that, or or even just a fraction of those other episodes. Um. So, what would you say? Ultimately, out of this, was was your favorite of the six episodes? Right, favorite of the six episodes. I. I'm torn between the first, second, and Trash Man. Mm-hmm. I like the creepiness of Trash Man. Um, I, I think... What am I going to go with? I'm going to have to go with... Oh, the acting is a bit stagnant in the first episode, though, isn't it? I'm going to go with the second episode. I would go the second as well. I, I liked the first, but with no payoff, it loses a lot of its value. And it, I feel like the second actually had a Monster of the Week yeah. element. And it had... A, it, it had a, it's what I wish, I think, the majority of the episodes had been like. It was satisfying all around. It gave me something to wonder about, but it also felt self-contained. Yeah. Well, the first episode is, it's like Empire Strikes Back. You kind of need Return of the Jedi to finish it off for you. And that's what the bookends were all about. And that's what they were going for. And ultimately, without the second episode, the first episode doesn't really mean anything. So, yeah, I'm going to have to stick with the second episode as the best one out the lot what was your worst one then well I would say this one yeah finale because the monster of the weeks didn't bother me 
other, especially my my frustration with them was that they weren't advancing a larger story, and the the silliness of the third one. I didn't mind as much when it's one out of six, when it was one out of three, or certainly as I was, you know, okay, good, good season one, episode one. So episode two is like a nice feel. It's kind of advancing it. And then a total redirect. Um, as much as I even liked the twist of the story, it just was a little, a little silly for me. It could have been lighthearted without being eye rolling at times. Yeah. How about you? Uh, this episode. Oh, I don't want it to be. I was so looking forward to this one. Um, the Were Monster is a a close run thing mm-hmm. because I, 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 I talked myself into liking it while we were talking about it, and yet I, it wasn't what I really wanted. Yeah. Um, I know that they're there. They will pop up, but mm, it's not what I want. This was what I want. It was done very badly, though. Very badly. It it was jarring. And there was, I think, halfway through this episode, I was sat there with my fingers on my temples just going, oh, God, Scott's going to hate me for this. He's really going <laughs> to hate me for no, this. No, it's all right. <laughs> you know, like, Fringe would take one episode a season and it would be bizarre it was usually like a drug related episode and it would be like one had a extended animated sequence one was um uh almost as if like the old gilligan's island when they would be like all mobsters for an episode or like uh you'd be like what how did that happen and it, it would have an explanation but it would be one silly episode um that still somehow fit in the overall chemistry of the season uh, but it was only one out of 20 or one out of 23 and yeah. I think again the were monster was one out of six or at the time one out of three it's just you feel cheated yeah it's it's like uh, you know you paid for not that you paid for it but you invested in something and, and they've kind of thrown away a fraction of it on you yeah yeah I, I feel gutted for it I'm I want more. I really do want more. But if it's going to be more like this, I don't want more. This. Do you think there's damage done by this? Do you think this hurts the chances? Because I'm seeing a loud dislike for this finale. Um, would it damage its chances? I don't think so. I think the producers know what they can do. They know what they can't do. They know what they should do. They shouldn't do. They know where, what we like now. It's all people voted on various sites, Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb and all that lot. Mm-hmm. They know what ones we liked, what ones we don't. They know from the comments. They've got people sifting through these comments. I've seen an interview where Chris Carter said he does pay attention to the feedback, and then he caught himself and kind of they said long pause. Yes, yes, I, I'm aware of what people are saying. Yeah. So. In in that sense, maybe it helped. You yeah. know, if he's really aware of you know what people wish they had, I hope it's not just one of those things where he doesn't care. This is his baby. This is his story that he wants to tell. You'll either like it or you won't. Uh, I I don't think he's like a Colton Hughes and Lindelof, so I think we're safe in that that part. But. If he is listening, Mr. Colton, uh, <laughs> Chris Carter, um, I nearly called him Colton Hughes then. Bloody hell. That, that works really well. Um, yeah, can we have... I know we've had like a a, a sort of Slender Man episode. Um, <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's episode. That'd be great. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, yeah, if I could have a small part in it as well. I don't mind getting killed. Be fine. Throw me off a bridge or something. Not actually throw me off a bridge, but you know, put me on there and then throw my character for bridge. That'd be great. Um, I want it to come back, that being said. But... I would worry, though, about what you come back to. Yeah. Because it's it's not just a cliffhanger. It's a cliffhanger where the entire world population is infected. We've already had people dying. Um, well, yeah, give it another 24 hours. 
lots of people are dead. Yeah, so, I mean, it's... They didn't really... They kind of wrote themselves into a corner. Yeah. There's either going to have to be some giant leaps of... uh, what are they going to use the chemtrails to drop the anti serum <laughs> or something like hey how is the scully saline bag going to get to the entire world population in time <laughs> yeah yeah drop it in the chemtrails and then you have like to... it didn't have to be that severe you could have had Mulder sick had that same drama that same sense of urgency and i mean it could have been could be aliens in the ship here to help and fight the government they're here 60 years later to right right the wrong and uh seek revenge against the the humans who killed their brothers and have been using their dna for evil the aliens Uh, are on our side and we've always thought that they weren't and it's always we're against the government really but it's because they've created this urgency it's uh I mean, you can't just sit there and have it be Mulder gets back on his feet, like an old uh, Star Trek kind of thing. Captain Kirk picks himself up and he he has a fist fight with the enemy. And uh, as he defeats the enemy captain, all's right in the world. No, they have a lot of work to do to yeah. try to fix things. They've painted themselves into a corner where millions of people are going to die by the next episode. And they've yes. got to explain how they got out of that one. With a couple and the of... only solution is stem cell DNA from a, a kid who's been referenced in every episode, but may not really be alive or existing. You know, jeez, that he's kid... gonna have to be in the ship. He, he's gonna have to be in the ship because oh. that's the only way they can heal Mulder. I didn't. They can't think be looking for him. So he has to be there. As they brought him to come, mother. Just come with us. <laughs> and, oh. and then that... It, I mean, it has to be. There's no other way they can save Mulder. I, do you know, I didn't even think about that. He could be in the ship. Oh, my God. Don't, I mean, don't you... I mean, I mean there's, they could do anything. But to me, that's the only plausible way you're saving Mulder. Because they don't even know where to look. There's no, been no reference. No, There's nothing. That's so bad, They're though. stuck in traffic. That's so bad. If he is in that shit. Oh, jeez. And it <sighs> may even be not so much to save her, but to win over Molt. You know, come on, Dad. Don't die. Come. Like, it, it's. Do you know, thinking about know. it, I'd, I'd rather them just start and. <laughs> <laughs> just vaporize him and start over? It, yeah, either vaporize them all or. Like Simpsons does, just reset at the beginning of the next episode. <laughs> Nothing really happened. <laughs> yeah. I was just watching something the other day, and they, they said, like, I sure hope next week, you know, things are back to the way they were. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure they will be. And it's like, that's what you need. Just Yeah, just that. <laughs> yeah. So, do you think the were monster survives the plague? Um. Yeah, he finds... Um, some sort of tree that doesn't permit the chemtrails to go into it. I don't know. And the he artist, the the artist will die, right? The trash man artist. Yeah, he's dead. And the children from episode two, they survive because they have the DNA. They're flying the ship as well. Two, three, four. Who else? Uh, what other? Oh, the terrorist is dead. So. Tad O'Malley, um, when he was getting the flu on his live broadcast... He well, didn't look that sick. Well, was his computer getting sick as well? Because that started to break... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He started flickering. I know he said lines of communication were being broken, but with lines of communication, either they're broken or they're not broken. They're not well. Like I said, the lights flickered, so that had to be, uh, you know, the infrastructure falling apart. Oh, but he, his computer coughed and it, it kind of fuzzed around a little bit. And I'm like, oh, it wouldn't do that. Yeah, it's either there or it's not. It's the internet. It's all digital. It's all ones and zeros. Either the ones and zeros get to your TV or they don't get to your TV. That's it. 
You don't get that, some. That was a bit of a letdown for me. After the first episode, I, I, we talked about the special effects, and I thought, you know, generally it was, it was good, and I thought through the first couple episodes, they had pretty much stayed away from being CGI and, and a lot of special effects. But this this one, it, I thought the scenes with O'Malley's studio, something didn't sit right with me. Like it, and maybe it was because we were supposed to be watching through a screen and it felt like I was watching it live. It, it just, or maybe it was because it was just too too opulent. Like you said, it was, uh, how's he got this giant studio? Like he's on uh, network television at 11 o'clock. It's, it, it's something didn't seem right about it all. It didn't have a grit or a no, that's right. underground that's... element to it. Yeah, it, it lost that. It was too clean and shiny, wasn't it? Right. Should be more like Wayne's World. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and I think we also had had a lot of episodes that, uh, cinematography-wise, were good. I, I think we talked in one episode about, like, the palettes and the like it it just some some episodes felt right the darkness or the the light and the the blueness the green the grayness and this this one the hospital scenes were so dark yeah and uh and then that Tatum Alley scenes were so bright and computery and it, it was it was a bit much yeah it was there was uh not enough balance in between it. it there wasn't enough flow through the, the whole yeah. lot um yeah I, I didn't like the studio things i, I always have a th- a problem with when you see people on studio sets on a tv set if you know what i mean uh, kind of a third person on the studio i, I it never works for me mm-hmm. never works never like it um i think it's familiar things from un- unfamiliar angles maybe I don't know. I just didn't like it. I don't like that sort of thing. Um, yeah. Right. Uh, so, I think we've talked enough about this. I think we've, I hate to say it, but wasted our time on this a little bit. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I would throw it out to the listeners that if uh, there is enough interest, I know we've we've had a couple of the Mixler sessions and a couple, a couple of instances. Sorry, my dog in the background is having a fit. No, that's cool. It's the uh, government. They're getting to her. Uh, see, there you go. She can smell the chemtrails. Yes, yes. But, uh, I mean, I think if there was enough interest to have a, a short little group discussion, maybe we can, can have a follow-up. Because, uh, I mean, we've shared our views and, and we've read what other people have said. But um, if people are interested in taking some of those comments and, and tweets that we get and having a little bit more of a dialogue, maybe we're missing something. Because you haven't seen the whole series yet and I've... I'm new to the series. Maybe mm-hmm. we could do a a short follow up. But other than that, I I think you're right. I think we've. I, I wish there was more to anticipate and to to be excited about. Yeah, but it, it's it, not at the moment. It's kind of a weird feeling, isn't it? It's yeah. sad trombone time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if if there are any more episodes after this, I'm more than happy to cover them for people. Uh, yeah. I'm willing to give up that time and to maybe get back my sanity about this. Uh, I will always do that. I've got no problems in that. If anyone wants me to cover or us to cover any old episodes, I'm quite happy to dive into the archive and let us know what would be a good one to cover. Um, I couldn't pick any out there's obvious ones like tombs and squeeze and but they're all from like season one and season two and stuff like that. So I'm willing to cover old stuff in the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we'll put this on a hiatus for now All right. and see what happens. If people want us to talk about it, if they want to come on and talk about the last six episodes, then we'll have an, an one more episode. Um, but if there's not the outcry for it, then we won't I'll call back it. in my cave. Yeah. Go back under my rock. Yeah, we we just turn the lights out and uh take the pencils from the ceiling. Yes. Um I think I can find another outlet for uh, for my 
my sharing of views. Yeah. I'll be sitting there uh, rethinking my mailbox. <laughs> Today I've received two bills. It's not quite the bills I was expecting to receive. I was kind of hoping for a bill from the phone company, but uh, I'll be looking forward to next week's delivery. I'd, I'd listen to that. <laughs> I think I would, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, how are they going to get in touch with us? Well, you can get in touch with us on the Twitter. I'm Elder McManus, and Scott is SHC1970. You can always tweet us and let us know if you want to come on, if you want to chat about it. We'll all Skype, we'll all hold hands and sing Kumbaya about the X-Files. I've got no problems in that. We've got the Shonky Lab page, which this is thrown up on, which is... Um, Facebook.com slash groups slash the Shonky Lab. Was it? No, Shonky Lab. It's not the Shonky Lab. It's just Shonky Lab. Uh, I normally post these episodes up there because Shonky Lab is coming back very, very soon because now X Files is over. I can resume the Shonky Lab. There you go. Uh, anything else to plug? Pop over to rogue2.com. That's where you can find all these episodes, all old episodes as well. Uh, myself and Scott used to do Apotheosis of a Bombast, which is at bombastpodcast dot uh, podbean podbean dot com, and we also have Rethinking Lost, which is Rethinking Lost dot podbean dot com as well. It's all yep. on iTunes. It's all over Stitcher. It's all over the place. So there's no excuses for not downloading that stuff. I think. Yes, that... I think you should. Uh, you should reconsider fringe if you find time to i mean when you if you find it in a bin somewhere cheap or if uh yeah i might go hunting for that now i've i've done my boardwalk empire i've done my sopranos i am what am i doing now what am i actually watching i haven't got anything oh no i've just bought mad men oh uh, yeah but i i can always I'll always put that on the the back burner well i would say your first season is going to have a lot of monster of the week and the mythology set up in that first season, which I know you said you were having trouble buying into it. It's probably, it kind of gets, uh, there's a reboot of sorts that happens partway through where, uh, some questions are answered and some are just kind of made irrelevant. Right. Um, but it's not, you know, it's not unsatisfying. It, it's the, what it's replaced with is uh, good enough, and then it becomes much more. By the end of the the show, it's pretty much pure mythology, you know, week to week. But then it becomes much more of um, uh, like a serial kind of show, like uh, with the the tone of like a Lost, where you're what will happen and and wondering about uh, characters and such. Cool. Um, I'm thinking about diving into the 100 as well. That looked good. I, I don't know much about it. I I kind of decided I'd wait and see, having been burned on shows that disappeared without resolution. But yeah, yeah I'll have to keep an eye out for that too. See, there's, there's all the stuff that we could talk about. Um, yeah. it, it can be possible if you donate to the Patreon that we have, which is uh, patreon.com forward slash rogue2media, and that will help us buy equipment, uh, buy more time on to the Mixler so we can broadcast this live for as long as we want to uh, and it just generally help us out and the more we get the more shows we can put out so yeah it might be worth mentioning just uh, people might not realize it's a uh, general uh, just ballpark figure I know like for Bombast and uh, Rethinking Lost it it's not something that can be free because where the episodes get stored in the bandwidth. So it ends up costing uh, at least, I'd say, $50 a year just to make those available um, with limited listenership. You know, if you're lucky enough to have it be popular, um, they count how many times it gets downloaded, and then they give you a bill, and they say, hey, congratulations, you have 200 listeners. You no longer fit in the $50 class. Gotcha. So, uh, that's where the Patreon certainly would help if uh, you know people people feel like supporting. That's that's where it goes beyond the equipment. It just even the hosting yep. websites that all tends to cost, unfortunately. Yeah, hosting Shonky Lab as well. This is uh, hosted onto a Libsyn account, which is 
uh, where Shonky Lab is held as well. So that's all yeah. costing per month as well. And then you've yeah. got the website hosting as well. So it all... It, if, if you it's not just charity. It's it, There's an actual expense that you're looking to offset. Oh, God, yes, yes. It's not going to die. It's not going to disappear <laughs> if nobody contributes. So don't worry about that. But it all helps. Yeah, every penny helps. Yeah. Right. right. Well, this was fun. I appreciate you reaching out. Well, I hope we have uh, more opportunities to podcast. I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will. Thank I'm you. I'm a freelancer now, folks. <laughs> Reach out. If you want my opinion on anything, I can fake it. yes uh yeah thank you to everyone who's downloaded this thank you to the future downloads as well i'm sure we'll get many many of them um thank you for giving us some time to talk x files to you guys uh it has been a pleasure even though we sound like we're burning it every now and again but you know that that's gonna happen i've got no problem it's fun though it's having something to talk about that's a pleasure in itself exactly yes yes Yes. if it gets you wound up then that's good if it gets you happy and pleased about it then that's also good so yeah it's been a pleasure thank you very much scott for joining me for these six all right thank you and uh, we'll catch you guys later i suppose yep bye-bye bye